In Zombies in Spaceland, we've been able to find out the main easter egg, we found out the huge ghosts and skulls side easter egg, we found out how to craft all of the wonder weapons, how to get the exquisite core, and much more, but there is still major unfound easter eggs in Zombies in Spaceland. In this video, we're going to be counting down the top three unfound easter eggs on the map. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button if you haven't already, and subscribe to the channel for more great Zombies content to come. Kicking things off at our number three spot is something that's very very unexplained so far within Zombies in Spaceland. When altering the game to get it to round 6000, instead of regular zombies spawning in, you now get zombies spawning in with space helmets on their heads. These space helmets decrease the damage of headshots, thus making zombies much much harder to kill for a period of time. But the question is, why does it trigger at round 6000? Round 5999, it doesn't happen. Once you hit round 6000, that's when all the zombies with space helmets start spawning in. The answer to that is probably because that is just a programming error. And in fact, these helmets were triggered to be spawned in game regularly. But the only thing is, we don't know how to activate it yet. I know some people have theorized it has to do something with the traps on the map, or perhaps it is getting to a very high round that we just haven't reached yet. People are in the mid 200s right now, and currently their zombies don't spawn in with space helmets, so it's probably unlikely that it's just high rounds that gets it there, and most likely it's a combination of high rounds and some kind of unfound trigger. It's going to be a really neat easter egg once we figure out how to actually trigger it, and the question of why you'd want harder zombies in the first place makes it kind of interesting on why they put this in the game. Maybe it has some other secondary, more interesting purpose that we're just not aware of at this time. Now moving on to our number two spot guys and that is the box inside the Pack-a-Punch room. This object inside the Pack-a-Punch room has perplexed players ever since Zombies in Spaceland was first released. The interesting thing about it is that it seems like it should do something. It's fully animated, it's prominent, it stands out inside the room, but no matter how many times you hold down your action button on it, no matter how many times you beat the easter egg, do any other side easter eggs, shoot it with certain weapons, nothing happens. The community is sure that this box is an unfound easter egg or part of some unfound easter egg and the question is what exactly is it? Most commonly within the community, we believe that this actually has to do with a super easter egg, a cross map easter egg that involves collecting pieces of the soul key from this map and then from the four upcoming DLC zombies maps to form four pieces of the soul key and the main piece. Once you collect all those pieces and return to zombies in spaceland, the working theory is that you'll be able to put all those pieces inside that soul chest and somehow you might be able to craft the soul key as a usable weapon in game. There is some references in the code to that effect as well, but it doesn't seem like it's able to be completed right now, but we don't 100% know. Perhaps this easter egg is able to be fully completed now, and we just haven't found the other pieces yet. And on a similar vein, let's move on to our number one unfound easter egg in Zombies in Spaceland. Inside the Packer Punch room, there is a ritual circle on the floor with some writing around it. Now obviously we figured this is important, it's probably a cipher, and when it was deciphered around a month ago, this is what it said. Mephistopheles grants your innermost desires, death is merely the beginning, serve thy master, eternally. So first we thought, okay, it's just like a story element, you know, nothing really big here. But then people started to notice some very interesting details within the code of the game. Most notably code within the game that's supposed to activate and teleport something the game code calls Yeti Eyes. And when activating that command, this is the result. A pair of Yeti Eyes appears on that sacrifice circle within the Pack-a-Punch room. Now why it does that and how to actually activate it in game is currently unknown. A whole bunch of methods have been tried out to activate this, the majority of them involving wearing the actual shades while going on the roller coaster as per a tip by Lee Ross, but that doesn't seem to do anything, or at least we haven't found out the right way to do it as of yet. But maybe we have to look at the contents of that ritual circle, and that will help us determine what we have to do. 
and within that ritual circle, it mentions Mephistopheles. Now listen to Lee Ross's reaction. He's the associate project director for zombies at Infinity Ward, essentially the Jason Blundell of Infinity Ward zombies, hearing that the Pack-a-Punch room cipher has been solved for the first time. Take a listen. Hey Lee, speaking about the ritual circle, what's your thoughts on Mephistopheles? Oh, great job. Whose comment was that? Uh, B-Bat again. B-Bat. Great job figuring that out. Uh, read up on the lore of Mephistopheles. Read up on the lore of that of that particular character. There's a reason Mephistopheles' name is in that circle. So Lee Ross advises us to check out the lore of Mephistopheles, and that perhaps when looking at various parts of that story in which he's involved with, that will lead us down the right track in order to find the method to find out this easter egg in game. It's definitely pretty incredible to think about. In terms of Mephistopheles himself, he was a satanic character within the Faust German folklore legend, essentially an agent of Satan himself, and largely his role in the story is to continue to convince the main character to- that will convince the main character to continue to lead his pursuits that will lead him to heaven when in fact his concept of heaven is actually hell. Perhaps we have to read into the legend a little bit more and then we can draw out some significance from it. I personally can't at this time. If you guys want to check out Mephistopheles, definitely Google him, see what you guys can come up with and how that can be applied to zombies in Spaceland as well. Maybe we'll actually as a group be able to find something. If you do find anything interesting, definitely let me know down in the comments. We have to get this Easter egg solved before DLC 1 is released, that's for sure, or else it'll just be probably forgotten. There is a chance that this has to do with the cross map super easter egg in Zombies in Spaceland, but odds are if Lee Ross is already kind of teasing us with it, then probably it's able to be done inside of Zombies in Spaceland, and, he's per and I'm pretty sure he's mentioned as much on a live stream before. Though just as I was recording this video, I did see a really interesting theory that might actually have to do with the easter egg, wherein in the Faust legend, Mephistopheles kind of coaxes the main character to follow a path that leads him to hell. In the cipher in Zombies in Spaceland, it tells tells us to serve thy master eternally, and that Mephistopheles will grant us our innermost desires. Well, in Zombies in Spaceland, there is no real other master than Willard Wyler. He's seen as like the kind of figurehead of the map, and for example, when you kill the brute for the first time, he says that, you know, that character wasn't supposed to die yet. So perhaps that means you have to keep the brute alive to begin with and then maybe carry on some other steps that would please Willard Wyler as he says in game and that would then activate something having to do with the easter egg. You follow thy master, you serve thy master and Mephistopheles will grant you a reward. Definitely something to keep in mind and try in game. But anyways guys, that wraps up this video. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that thumbs up button down below. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I also want to remind you guys of my new non-gaming related channel called Shock and Awesome. Essentially, I'm going to be posting various videos in a more documentary style, covering some very profound world events using a bunch of raw footage. I posted two videos videos there so far. One is called Abandon Tokyo, the second is called Evacuate New York. And if you want to check that out, link is in the description where it's listed as new channel. Click on that link, subscribe to the new channel, check out the two new videos, and here's a teaser for Evacuate New York. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you with another video tomorrow. Throughout history, there have been many where were you when moments. I can imagine a child asking their parents, where were you when Caesar became emperor? Or when Napoleon was defeated at Waterloo? Or at the end of the First World War? Or the Second? When Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas? When you heard man had walked on the moon? You see, we too have our own where were you when moment. It's one whose date is permanently etched into the minds of all those who experienced it or experienced it vicariously through the television. But this is the story of the people in the city of New York, on the island of Manhattan, on September 11th, 2001. It's really not a story about the disaster that took place on that day, but the response to it, when the call went out to evacuate New York City.